Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Featuring today a one versus one on the ruins of a ruin. We shall be watching Chu One fighting for the Americans, taking on the fight for the second armored division, holding up against Shevo No Lucky Strike, holding the line in the name of the 352nd Infantry Division. And we are seeing a engineer heavy start going out for Chu One. Could be a free engineer start by the looks of it. Whereas we are seeing no lucky strike going for the more standard two pioneer start there much quarters. And looks like we are seeing Chu One's already initial capping order of sort of being materializing. He's heading right here for the right hand side, so obviously he will be focusing right here on this area. He might make some minor progress up here, but clearly he's intending on sort of holding alongside this line initially. And there we go, Barracks finished, going for the fuel right there, and the fact that he's also, of course, going heavily for the fuel also gives us another indicator that he's likely going for either BARs or vehicles or some sort of armor early on. Yes, and we are seeing the first infantry squad out for no lucky strikes, the foot grenadiers arrive. And ammunition is taken, and we also note here that no lucky strike is more spreading out. There's no greater focus. Note here, immediately connected, immediately getting those 10 fuel within his grasp within the first one and a half minutes so clearly again some sort of vehicle based strat or again BR based strat for Chu one would of course be quite interested to see if that actually turns out second unit for no looking strike is going to be another squad of full grenadiers they are rushing towards the fuel point here so I mean obviously I mean the Wehrmacht also wants fuel but Chu one wants it more rifleman squad the first one out there for Chu one some riflemen to take on the crouch, and there we go, Pioneer's going to get spotted by the engineers. Might try and make a run here for the railway station building, or depot. Not tell you how to describe it. The logistics of railways are a bit beyond me, in particular of that period. But we are seeing a second squad of full candidates out. Munitions there falling, so already 2-1 is resorting to harassment when he can. There you go, Pioneer taking up position within the depot. First guys moving down, they will probably be able to dislodge the engineers from right there. And another engagement over here, engineers encountering Fultz Canadiers. The engineers are definitely not going to make it out of that one. Hank goes down, the Pioneers continue to fight from here. Down to half health, they will not live much longer. And we do see them abandoning the premises. Will they retreat? Will they leave? Will they run? And a third squad of Fultz out for no lucky strike. This is definitely interesting. Pioneers once more rushing into the building to deny to the Americans. I imagine the Fultz is going to be taking up position there to fire down upon here. In the meanwhile, the engineers are pushed away, but no real pursuit from the Fultz gun it is. And there we go, Fultz gun the building. We do see the Americans pulling away. Simply now too much firepower being directed against them from the well, building. Another rifle squad pushing up here against the Fultzkans. The Fultzkans almost done, but the rifle will be able to get close enough. And that could, yes indeed, result in a retreat right there. No lucky strike knew he could not win a fight like this. And opted for discretion. The better part of Valor and just got the bloody hell out of there without wasting men on it. Engineers here, they could running into a bit of a problem with the Pioneers, but then again, so good the Pioneers with the Ruffin shooting at them. And looks like an engineer squad could go down for 2-1. That would be huge. No, the engineers bloody well managed to get out of there. Sandbags up here. Not entirely sure why at that angle, I mean, if the enemy is going to come from this area, so... I don't quite get why no lucky strike laid down sandbags right there. That one seems quite odd to me. Bit of engagement of that there, but the folks kind of is. We are seeing a fourth squad. I mean, so far we are in fact seeing a four-man or four-squad start from no lucky strike involving folks kind of is. This is... Quite rare than we actually see this sort of start from the Wehrmacht. It can work, it can work, but I mean, it's rare when you usually see Wehrmacht players usually throwing in something other than that. Of course, you know, the MG snipers or bike shrimp marks, but in this case, he's relying only on glorious German infantry. And pushing forwards rather swiftly. Rather than being pushed back themselves. In fact, they're a bit wounded. And right, of course, if you take up position here, he will get off a nice position against the Americans who will be caught out in the open with no cover. They do manage to render the fuel point right there neutral. Mine engagement over here. And we do see the Fulsker squad retreating right there. And we see at the same time now that no lucky strike is taking up while the Fulsker kind of is continue their advance. Heinz quickly drops. So does Helmut. And we immediately see him laying down sandbags right in front of the enemy position, granting him heavy cover. But again, the problem is a bit 
it's a bit pointing in the wrong direction, so it's not fully beneficial, I think. Although right here, there's a bit better. But again, you know, cover is directional. If they shoot from a different angle, you're a bit buggered. And this placement of the cover rather would benefit more from assault from this angle, not so much from attackers holding up this angle themselves in heavy cover. But nonetheless, they weren't in a terrible enough situation that to one retrieve them rather than face the Wehrmacht. We do quickly see sandbags over to deny the Americans the use of this cover, unless of course they get some wire cutters in and clear that out. Mine's going down there. No luck oh, mine there as well, quickly killing two Americans, leaving the rest wounded. Possibly crying a bit as well. Of course, they'll just say, we got something in our eyes, but we all know they're actually crying. The first is though getting pushed away here. We are seeing a full assault force going in for 2 1, two flamethrower squads and a rifleman squad. Definitely going to be able to put on some hurt. And we are seeing a bunker going down for no lucky strike. We could, and he's taking up, he's going straight for the assault phase. At the same time, the engineers are running into it. Probably could see the engineers go down. And there we go, Fulcher going to score, secures a kill for the far line. And meanwhile, the assault goes in here. Two squads of Fulcher is going to hold up this entire force. They should focus down the engineers first as they are the easy targets. And there we go, they are in fact. But even then, several Fulcher goes immediately burst into flames. Cooked like hot dogs and run off the field. And the meanwhile, Fulcher is here going to flank the rifle. And again, note the cover hit does not do much for them. It's a cover. It does nothing. But there we go, the Ravna run off. Medic bunker up. I mean, that's actually a good coordination in conjunction with all the false kind of escort she has. A medic bunker is great. Though, of course, you might risk there'll be no wounded produced. But the rest of his infantry reinforcing. Assault phase completed, so we might see a Sturm Armory soon ish. Further fighting up here. Ravna pushing in. Fulcher is up in heavy cover. More infantry will be needed. And it's Is on the way. But the Fosgars will, in the meanwhile, be overwhelmed down here. We do see the medics running out to pick up the wounded. And likely they will be focused down. And there we go. Fosgars, though, are moving up. Pioneers are unable to help. They are too wounded. And we're seeing terror doctrine out. And we're seeing inspired assault chosen as well. Could we see him actually use it? But tragic thing is, I mean, he's not going to get much use out of the medic bunker due to the medics all being dead, and that's rather how you quickly, is most quickly, actually just neutralize the medic bunker. You just deal with the medics. We that way, of course, they can't pick up the wounded. So right now, no lucky strikes. Medic bunker is of very little help to him. Storm army now going up. Some support being sent in for the second Panzer division. The second Panzer Division was actually an Austrian division, or at least formed from Austrian troops, and was also known as the Vienna Division. Team ready. Troops moving towards there. Slight American advance, though. World 2 1 currently holding the advantage. Interesting enough, he's not been using resources on anything, so of course it's obvious he's going to be spending it on something, but let's, of course, we see anything. You know, that's not BRs, grenades, sticky bombs, or for that matter, armor cars. The more likely he's, in fact, he might be going for a tank depot. Of course, we'll have to see that soon enough. If that is actually the case. But we do see no lucky strike fighting hard for the West as Fulcher is pushing forwards through the ruined streets of ruin. While other forces are moving into the center. I mean, we're seeing no victory points in the center. We're seeing mines being laid down. And again, I mean, this sandbag emplacement, it's rather only to the benefit of his enemy because, again, he can pretty much ensure that when he comes and takes him from the north, I mean, the opponent will have cover right there. So I I really don't understand why no lucky strike laid down sandbags. That is completely mind boggling. And meanwhile, Fox is running into problem. We are seeing the Americans, of course, in lighter cover, but there's no real heavy cover for them here. In some cases, no cover at all. Fulcher's here, the ranks are probably We could see a squad going down, and they did go down. And I have no idea why he's sending in. He's really intent on getting the fuel right there, denied to the Americans, but at the same time, he is taking insane losses in the process. And of course, the question is, is it actually worth it? Is it worth it? I'm not entirely convinced it is. And of course, the medics just get gunned down. And there we go, 2-1's infantry is finally forced away. 
Although they were able to inflict heavy losses upon the Germans. Schwerer punches speed back and out. There we go. No lucky strike. Receiving some armored car assist. And the rifle quickly come under fire. And they quickly run off. And let us go have a look at Chu Wang. Who's floating a bit of resources. Supplier going up. We're also seeing a Tria Center. He could very likely go for a tank depot after that if he actually wanted to. But with the armored car, of course, he really actually needs something to stop the German armored car because, I mean, otherwise he's going to very quickly find himself off most of the map. So, of course, the question becomes, what will Chu Wan's response be to the armored car? Will it be the motor pool? Will it be the tank depot? Or what will it be? Kampfkraft sending going up for no lucky strike now. Armored car pushing in. We do see the Americans getting a bit closer again. He's worried that Chu Wan might have sticky bombs. But it rather looks like he has not. And there we go. Supply yard is up. And there we go. We are in fact seeing the tank depot next. And he's clearly got the resources as soon as done to get a tank to Which could clearly and swiftly knock out the armoured car. But in the meanwhile, no lucky strike. Just needs to push on to do some damage. And a second armoured car rolls out. Stopping up another assault right there. And we're seeing armor production up, so Chu Wan is clearly preparing for some sort of real synergy effect. And we're seeing a mine up here. He's trying to lure it in, sets it off, but he might lose the photos. No, they're running into the train depot. The train depot might pop up the other side. There we go. Swiftly done and saves the foot. It's kind of the squad. Very nice that, but there we go. Tank depot's up, and tank destroyer will very soon be coming along right there. Only question is will it be an M10 or an M18? Hellcat or Wolverine? And it shall be the Hellcat. The faster of the two, also the much more lightly armored. Of course, in game, it's mostly about the gun, there's the difference. But in the actual war, in the real war, the Hellcat was considerably much faster, but also considerably much lighter armored. And also smaller. Ravni again, holding out, and again. I mean, the placement of this bit of sandbags really. Doesn't make much sense. And again, it's only benefiting 2 1. Because again, he can just take the point and. It, oh well. Flame for engine is moving up. Second armor car rolling out, and we do see the tank destroyers on the way. The Hellcat rolls through the streets, crashing through walls. Robin here, though, actually need to get out now because since there's too many armored cars, we could see the squad go down. No, the Hellcat gets in the way, and there we go. The armored cars are now in a serious amount of trouble as the Hellcat with the 76mm gun is on the roll, on the loose. Mines are being laid down, and the mine goes off, suppressing a nearby Falska squad and wounding. But the Hellcat is not to be stopped. We see Veteran Shot, which is definitely going to help the armored cars hold a bit longer. Field repairs up. Field repairs, ladies and gentlemen. 2 1 was clearly prepared for this. And clearly willing to accept the risk. And there we go. Armor car 1 going to go down very soon. And a quite a big loss right there. We do see a Krieg back snap. So he's taking backwards to get some anti-tank weaponry. He's likely going to get packs over the course. He could also just bother with a few stooks. Perhaps upgraded one of his armored cars to a Puma. But c'est la vie. Quite a nice bit of wiring going on there, but ultimately the Indians cut the way through, going for the fuel point. No lucky strike, loses, losing resources left and right. His Hellcat mercy repair, but there's still just that engine damage. But looks like the Hellcat is escaping the grasp of the Wehrmacht. Panzer Abwehr Kanone being forced out. Rifle moving up there. Things are definitely looking a bit grim for no lucky strike. And the 352nd Infantry Division. Falska's holding up behind the ruins, or in front of them. And there we go, Falska and Adis are on the run. Hellcat less fast without its engine. We could see another one come out, I suppose the Sherman will also be a good move, and he's also got a ton of manpower, so he could continue doing some extra with it. He could of course consider an observation post, on one of the fuel points, we could basically give him more fuel. More engagement up here. The full support by the armor car push up. 
but looks like the Volkswagen simply cannot hold out. The armor car cannot kill the Americans fast enough. Mine goes off there. Oh, the engineers do manage to get away. Quite lovely. Medics actually pick up a wounded man and get him to safety, but he, yeah, he'll get it done soon enough. They're so will the riflemen. More flame for engineers moving up. And of course, a bit of a problem using packs on this map is, of course, all the buildings. There's much more narrow fields to find. There's also, of course, also that way, a lot more ways of flanking about the anti tank guns. So, in that sense, no lucky strike needs to be careful with these packs, otherwise, you can very quickly actually end up losing them and hanging them over to the opponent. Second Hellcat ready now for 2 1. And the second armored. And there we go, the Hellcat has been patched together. We see the Hellcats rolling forwards. Pioneers are getting engaged. And the Goliath sneaking out. Actually, got a Goliath. Interesting. Laying out up here behind heavy cover. Good move. Close to the victory point. Also good move. So in case the Americans go for that, they will get a very explosive surprise. The Goliath was a remotely controlled demolition device. Quite explosive. Oh dear, the Hellcats going to move up to it and... No, oh, no, he moved it away. Oh, why did you do that? And there we go, almost done, almost done. The engine is still there, but there's not really much in range to knock it out and finish the job. Again, there are no stooks. I really think no lucky strike would benefit at least from a single stook or two. Instead, again, he is relying on the packs, which are a bit more tricky to move. Hellcat quickly getting repaired of all the damage rather than pushing up. Again, 2 1 holding most of the map. We see a squad up here holding that bit of the map on its own. And there we go, the Hellcats are running forward. It's the only thing needed to stop at the moment, right here in the center, are Panzerfausts. Packs are far removed. And the Hellcats just keep pushing. And again, note the manpower flipped by 2 1. Again, he could benefit from spending it on something. Uh, again, say a s observation post or two. And there we go. We're actually seeing a Sherman coming out. No, no another Hellcat. So, a bit of quiet as the two forces move about a bit though, but no lucky strike is definitely under a lot of nasty pressure, having a bit of trouble holding up things, again, he's very much lacking in some sort of more effective anti-tank means, and again, he's only got one pack, but the Hellcats are quickly going to be moving past that arc, and again, there's so much that can easily block up the line of fire, so it becomes a lot less effective. And there we of course go, now the pack is pretty much on its own. And the armor cars are going to get hunted down. So, again, the packs. I'm not convinced that was a good move to back check towards for no lucky strike. Although we do see another one here laying up to cover the more awkward ankle up there. That could work. That could work. No. Oh. Again, there is so much, in fact, blocking its line of fire that there's only really this small gap for it to use. And we do see some gunners arriving. You also see MP40s being equipped for the first guns. We do see the Hellcats actually getting a penned in a bit. Although, again, if they just take a longer route up here, they can escape, you know, taking a route through the runways. And we do see a Henschel or two placed right there. Enemy unit down. With our Pantanakas. And here's the mounting. Oh, Hellcat got one right there. Oh, they might have benefited actually from being a Sherman. A bit more in against infantry. Packs heading up. There we go. Nice hit on the Hellcat. Nice hit. Three Hellcats so far. Tank destroyers all. And again, a ton of resources being floated by Q1. I really think he's missing some opportunities to really do some damage. He could also consider upgrading his rifle with Browning Automatics. There's currently so much he could do, but sadly isn't. And that's basically. Giving no lucky strike the advantage to basically turn things around because again the more time those resources wasting away that small time that no lucky strike can sort of get things back on foot and stabilize things thus meaning that when he finally gets around to using those resources 
No lucky strike will be prepared, but we are finally seeing a Sherman coming out. And again, I would love to see some sort of observation post. I mean, one of the munitions could also work out. That way he'd have more munitions for field repairs and possibly even allied war machine in the longer run. I and mean, there's a lot of, again, reasons to do such things. But again, doesn't quite seem to materialize for 2-1. Let's go look at No Lucky Strike and also go over to the mid-game analysis. Current situation, No Lucky Strike is a bit under pressure, but he is being given more time due to the fact that, again, that 2-1 is floating resources, and thus he's, in fact, not putting all the resources into the fight, thus not able to put in maximum pressure. And, of course, that way, you know, putting more pressure on the rest of the troops and losing them, and, again, you know, all in the longer run, he ends up losing more resources. And, again... Gives No Lucky Strike more time to get back in the fight. No Lucky Strike, though, I think, needs something else than just packs. And more than two packs. I mean, he's seen the field repairs, so he must also know his opponent has gone for left side armor. And in that case, two packs and possibly a kind of squad with a pants like a two. I mean, might not necessarily do it against poachings. He needs something heavier. And again, he could just get a few stooks, and that might help a bit, otherwise of course there's also the consideration you could go straight for a panzer command and get some panzers. Of course there's the final option which could also be what he's going for which of course is just getting a King Tiger de Königstiger. The Tiger 2 in the hopes he can slow down the American advance that way and of course do some terrible glorious damage in the name of the fatherland. But for 2-1 again he needs to spend his resources and he needs to push on, he needs to do some damage, he yeah, needs to keep up the pressure, and he needs to support with infantry. With BARs, he needs to be able to overwhelm those anti-tank gun positions. He might also want to move up a bit further on the right flank, again, spreading out no lucky strike, rather than what is currently happening, which is no lucky strike, consolidating his forces on the left and flank, and again, thus having a better chance of stopping no to one's direct assault. But let us return to the fight. Let us return to the fight. Grenadiers moving up there, Fultz Grenadiers, Fultz Grenadiers, some with MP40s, most without. And overall, in fact, he currently has an infantry advantage over Chu one as he has five squads, Chu one has only one, and he does not have Browning Automatics either. There we go, Fultz Grenadier quickly finds his life extinguished as 50 caliber rounds and a 75mm high explosive round tears through him. The Sherman seeing quite a bit of action on several fronts. It saw action with the British in North Africa and, of course, other places. Of course, also saw service with the Russians, depending on who you ask. They either liked it or didn't like it. If you ask the German high, uh, the Russian High Command, they weren't quite so fond of it because it was rather a bit more requiring tank than the T-34. If you ask some of the tankers, they actually quite liked it because it was a bit more comfortable and they were also more likely to survive if the tank was hit. Which is something, considering the Sherman tank was known as the Ronson, basically, you know, the one-time lighter. Which wasn't necessarily because of the fuel, which is something it is actually due to the ammunition and how it was stored. Of course, the Russian T-34 had the ammunition even stored worse because the ammunition was all over the place. So that was very much likely to catch on fire. But going to on into problem with a Hellcat. Grenadiers and Fuskers, oh, finding both the rifle and the rifle, finally guns and BARs that could definitely give Chu one a great advantage against No Lucky Strikes Infantry, the 352nd, despite the support of the 2nd Panzer Division with Marmot Cars, are running into a lot of problems. The rifle here, though, are getting murdered by a volley of auto cannon fire. Quite nice. Oh, looks like it's bugging up. Oh, that can happen sometimes, you know, where you press retreat and nothing happens. Of course, other times, you're pressing the wrong button. I mean, I'll admit, both things have happened. And sometimes you just need to check, but I mean, it definitely does feel unpleasant when you lose a score because, you know, it just refused to retreat. Yes, but Veteran D2 up now for No Lucky Strikes Infantry, and that's going to help a bit. But at the same time, it's also going to leave him more vulnerable to armor because, again, Veteran D2 does nothing against Shermans nor Hellcats. And when the Persian comes, because that's likely going to come, that's not going to help much either. But it looks like he'll soon have a Grenadier squad reform. That's nice. Americans advancing into the center. No lucky strike at the 3 and 52nd under quite a bit of pressure. And it was not a co uncommon for bits of a Panzer Division, for example, to be detached to an infantry division to provide support. 
that way, since again, particularly in the later stage of the war, the Panzer Grenadier regiments usually also find themselves under strength of holding larger parts, so again, not uncommon to see Grenadiers fighting alongside the Panzers to make up for the lack of Panzer Grenadiers. But Grenadiers advancing with Panzer Schreck in hand. Coming under fire right there from the Sherman. Grenadiers pulling away a bit. Bit of a shame, bit of a shame. Could have held up in heavy cover. Instead, they're standing on the wrong side of the cover. Forsyth, no lucky strike. Forsyth. Oh, Sherman misses. Bleeding close. Pax moving up a bit cautiously. And looks like 2 1 could be setting up for an assault. He's still got the rifle hiding in here. Interesting enough, he's not moving them much about. Curious. And there we go. Looks like they're sort of setting in. A full frontal attack. Nothing on the flanks, though. Although it looks like the Grenadiers can't hold up. We do see the Fulkers being detached now from the right side. Guarding action to send in. The Grenadiers are set on the run. Pioneers, armored cars moving about. Pack being pulled away. Armor pulling in. And we also see a Pershing arriving now from Core Reserve. And we do see a Pioneer squad went down, trying to lay down a mine. They were caught up in the American push. And there we go. We do see the Fulkers going to get caught in the miss. Mid of the entire American armor. Follow up on the infantry. Nice usage right there. Of course, he should still have some infantry to follow up on the armor to clear out any anti tank gun positions. But sadly, most of his infantry was chewed up in the initial assault, leaving the armor a bit exposed, in fact, which is not very good. Although we see one pack here, could in fact be cleared out, but we also see Grenadiers moving in. Field repairs does pop up, giving his armor some more extended lifetime. And there we go, Pershing moves in. Pack de crude, Grenadiers arriving, coming under intense fire. A few riflemen still moving about. And the pack right here is caught on the far side of everything else. American armor moving in. Repair bunker up, by the way, for no lucky strike. Armored cart taking a hit. Looking very grim, very grim. And the German base is getting blasted into dust. There we go. Repair bunker is kaput. And is pushing forward again right into the line of fire of all the American armored bits. At the same time, the pack seems to be sneaking up. We do see some falseness operating far over here. And looks like we are going to see that entire left side cut off. Nicely done right there. Vermont quarters could fall. Pack setting up. And again, the lack of infantry is meaning there's not a lot to actually protect his armored bits. And there we go. The Sherman's taking several hits from the Panzerschrex. He could be seeing two one all of a sudden suffering some losses in terms of his armor. Pershing taking hits. Pershing's actually quite a bit damaged. Grenadiers though taking heavy hits. And now the Sherman needs to get away. Get away. And Fulton is fighting very close to the pack, but they need to get out of there. Could go down. In fact, no lucky strike is down to just the five infantry squads of pack and an armored cat. All the pioneers are dead. And the Pershing is heavily damaged. He was a bit too close. He did not pull out soon enough. And he did not have an infantry. No proper support. And we could see the Pershing go down if the Grenadiers get close enough. One shot fails to penetrate. But only one needs to. The Sherman doing what he can to support its Pershing brother. And there we go. Panzerschreck rocket knocks out the Pershing. The Panzerschreck could penetrate up. I think to close to 300 millimeters of armor. So, I mean, the Pershing's armor technique will not really prove much of a problem. And there we go, the second pack getting off a kill before getting blown up. So overall, I mean, Chu Wan was able to do a lot of damage, but at the same time he suffered a loss. And overall, most of No Lucky Strike's combat force is still operational. And now we do see a King Tiger arriving. In that case, the loss of the Pershing and the other Hellcat is definitely going to hurt because that's definitely going to be a lot less to stop the advance of the King Tiger, which can be probably supported by German infantry. Reifman continue to rain up here, and I think that's actually a mistake from 2 1. He might have forgotten them, and again, had he pushed them into the fight as well as the armor pushed up the center alongside the infantry, he could have taken a lot away, a lot more resources from No Lucky Strike, but of course, all you know, had something to support the armor. So, Raw, that is quite a bit of a shame right there from 2 1, and it's definitely given. No lucky strike, a chance for returning back with the might of the Königstiger. 
fighting over here for the victory points. Falklands being run off by a Pershing supported by riflemen. All three victory points are in the hands of the Americans, more or less. Or will soon be, anyways. Although, looks like something's going on up here. If I could click up there, and there we go. Northern victory point, in fact, going to fall. But the King Tiger is on the move as well, supported by most of the German infantry. That is good. That is, in fact, very good. And there's still yet to be a single squad of Canadians reformed from the medic bunkers. That's quite impressive in some curious manner. Raven held up by the control tower. There is no air support for them, though. And there we go, the Raven are run off. They could not hold out. Looks like the Americans are digging in the center. One Hellcat, one Sherman, one Pershing. And there we go, almost 30 minutes into the game, a Gunner Deer Squad gets reformed. So I mean again, even if you get a, gun, a medic bunker, you're not always guaranteed you actually get a lot out of it. Same applies to medic stations and whatnot, but usually there's some benefit in getting it anyways. <laughs> but again, one of the ways that Chu Won certainly made it less effective was basically just keeping on shooting the medics. So again, I mean, if you are facing a medic bunker, you can't quite get it. Just try and kill the medics instead. It might be against the Geneva, Con Geneva Conventions, but you know, this is war, not a game. <laughs> Daniels coming under fire, King Tiger coming under fire, Flame for Engineers advancing. Let's go have a look at Chu One again. As the King Tiger advances, Hellcat in ambush mode. Pershing taking a bit of a direct hit there. Perhaps they're hoping to lure the King Tiger forward to have the Hellcat then ambush it from the side. No, never mind. Oh! Ow! He uncloaked it and missed actually an ambush bonus because when the Hellcat is cloaked and then shoots, it gets small bonus, a bit like a pack or something else. So that was a bit of a miss. Got too close to the Canadiers and there we go. The Hellcat quickly went down. That was definitely not. A good engagement at all for Chu One. Now, of course, the Sherman is veteran T2, which is nice, but Chu One is running out of things like as he supported and the Pershing. Again, it's partly due to that initial engagement where he was not, you know, really putting forward with everything he had. And the Ripeman score is still within that building. What on earth is he thinking? He has completely forgotten about it. It's rather the impression I'm getting more and more, which is a bit sad. You should not be forgetting a rifleman squad inside a building. There we go, the Fulker is getting absolutely torn up. And gone, Armored Kado moves in a bit as well. Armored car slowly moves away. All a bit quiet. And looks like some gentleman right there got gunned down by the merciless men of Chu Wan. And up gunning the Shermans, that's lovely. They might be a bit too late for that now. Unless, of course, he managed to flank the King Tiger, in which case it might prove still beneficial. But uh, no Lucky Strike Space is definitely a bit looking. Poor. And finally the riflemen were roused out of their safe protective building where they had set up shop. And who shall win this fight? The Grenadiers or the riflemen? And it looks like the ooh, this could be very close, but there we go, the Grenadiers have run off by two ones riflemen, although we do see some Fulkers pulling up. And it looks like we are seeing armor being dispatched by two one to try and dig out the Germans from there. And we also see Grenadiers moving in, heavily burdened with mighty Panzer Shreks. And the Fulton is getting roused out there, building and coming out of fire from that Sherman. There we go, Heinz spikes the dust. And Inspired Assault, good lord! Inspired Assault increasing the rate of fire of the Panzer Shrek and making them do more damage. 
Oh, absolutely nasty. Really clever trick down again. You know, also way to use in spite of salt. It can, you know, with a few panzer tricks, absolutely devastate allied armor if you know what you're doing. So, very nicely done right there. Grenade going off with the rifleman. Two dead by the looks of things. So, a bit of a surprise right there on two ones, men. King Tiger though advances forwards once more. And a replacement rifleman squad on the way again. He's floating resources. And I'm having hiccups. Okay, he's here coming under fire from the Pershing. Germans are seizing Both plot upgrades though, that is good, that is good. The rest of the situation for 2-1 though at the current stage is less than good. But he's doing what he can, he's taking points back. He's got some sort of victory point advantage, but that's about it. Another Goliath from no lucky strike. Marlin engagement going on there. Gunner is coming out and fire from some riflemen, some very plucky ones. And running into a bit of a problem there. The King Tiger and more, another Gunner squad. More infantry moving out. And folks going into the match up, running through the riflemen. We do see veterans. He's free now. Four no lucky strikes infantry, giving them quite a solid, heavy health bonus. Gunner Deer coming out of the but they do ultimately get pushed away. There's still one Falska squad though holding up. Thing for the 352nd. As the second armored infantry are getting pushed away though in the end. Things are beginning to look increasingly desperate for you. One as his men are failing and his armor is being blown to bits and pieces. Not entirely sure what it is Chu one is trying to achieve right there. Seems me a bit peculiar. Seems me a bit peculiar. But the Rafna are being run off. They are being run home. And they are taking losses. Observation post up as well now for Chu one So finally he bothers one. Again, I think he could have done better if he'd gone for it a much, much earlier on. Now again, it might just be on that. Ever tragic category of too little too late. Now we could have done a lot more earlier on. But now, I mean, almost 40 minutes into the game. Really? Really? I know. I don't think it's going to do much. Although we do see a shaman wreaking havoc upon some kind of is Caught out in the open by some old housing. King Tiger being dispatched. Constantly being repaired by some... Plucky engineers. Grenadiers on the move. He could be seeing another inch part of all going off against that. Pershing. And the Shaman running into problem with that. King Tiger advancing its high velocity 88mm gun. Tearing food. Folks goes here fighting versus Rifleman. And of course, things to note. Three days to go until the Company 2 beta begins for those who have pre ordered. So if you haven't pre ordered, be sure to do so. And what can be recommended is Steam, since there will be some good bonuses if you enough people pre-order and looks like we could see the observation boat going down there but we call to see the grenades going down there as they are taking heavy losses from the Pershing which has actually been self and damaged and of course oh, ooh, a veteran to two flamethrowers squad lovely Goliath sneaking in from behind casualties being suffered by Chu one looks like the Sherman was wrecked indeed looks like the false guns might have gotten it with a Panzerfaust Engineers trying to repair the Pershing, but there is an armored car lurking at the edges of things. We also see the pack sneaking up. Oh, nice little raid there by the armored car, completely tearing through the engineers and forcing 2 1 to retreat them, leaving his Pershing a bit unrepaired. And there we go. Pack soon ready. Oh, Goliath seems to not bother with that. 
Pershing quickly pulling back behind something to block the line of fire of the anti-tank gun. And there we go, Goliath moving up to the Pershing and gets off a nice hit. We have a secured sector under Doing quite a bit of damage to the Pershing, in fact. And once more things quiet down a bit. Most of the fight is out of 2-1. And there we go, fuel down, fuel down. And now Calliope's, I don't think that's going to do it for 2-1. But we'll see how it goes nonetheless when it unleashes rocket-based hell. King Tiger moving in. Fosco's getting run off. Rifleman held up here in the small house. King Tiger looks to be making a move from the American base. Rob Nimble into problem. We are seeing not grenades, actually, I thought just for a brief moment, but no. Fighting continues and looks like the Americans are losing on every single front. A Calliope barrage, and we are seeing the pressure going into the King Tiger, but the King Tiger could win this. We could see field repairs being going up for the Pershing to keep it going, and there we go, but I fear it might have been a bit too late. The Pershing has not benefited yet. And there we go, looks like the Pershing will go down, and we see GG from 2-1. GG, Pancho takes up, get a bit of connecting hits there with the Calliope. And game over, a loss to the second armor, a victory for the 352nd. In the face of overwhelming American armor, they were able to see through and basically came down to that sort of close to mid-game engagement from 2-1. And again, he hadn't poured all resources into it, thus the resources he did have took much more of beating that was perhaps necessary. And actually resulted in 2-1 losing several vital units in a completely losing moment. I mean, he pretty much peaked right there, and then it was a slow steep climb down again, and he just couldn't get up again because, again, that assault had not been quite managed as well as it could have been. There were units not doing anything, the resources that could have been pushed into it, but again, it did not happen. And so his army was left on its own to fend for itself and was taken out by Pax and Panzerzix when that shouldn't have been happening in the first place, which was absolutely devastating for 2 1. And there were so many things he could have done. He could have traveled over some more armor support. He could have observation posts up earlier. He could have gone for a weapon support tender, gotten snipers. That would have helped. But none of those things materialized. And instead, 2 1 wasted away his armor and wasted away the game slowly but surely. Of course, I mean. No lucky strike definitely did not do Sterlingly as well. I mean, again, he was very close to going down with his ship. And again, it was pretty much the King Tiger which saved him. And the fact that, again, Chu Wan had rather wasted things away. Had he perhaps gone for some Stooks instead of those packs, he might have benefited a bit better in the longer run and the shorter for that matter. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own or provide some feedback in the comments? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.